And I'll be muted soon. It's looks like my grandbaby just wake up, woke up, so we may hear some noise in the background. <laughs> like she, she hungry, so. Grandbaby. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like she's gonna be uh just heard her in the background. So. Yeah. Yes, yes, speaking. Uh, Trusty Woods and grandbabies. <laughs> <laughs> you old? I thought you wasn't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, good genes, good genes running the family. So. Okay, hello. <laughs> uh, I see you guys have another friend. <laughs> hey, man, all right, uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. All right, uh, so uh, once again, I just like, uh, it's always good just kind of getting like a poll and, and a pulse on uh, what it is that we're doing just so that we can find uh, methods and things of improvement. Um, so just in terms of how we do it, you know, in terms of, um, you know, our recordings and different things like that. Um, and you don't have to necessarily uh, say, but it kind of just helps as we kind of develop what it is that we're doing. Um, and how many, how many of you online uh, and on uh, Zoom through conference, how many actually go back and watch the Bible studies? Anybody? Uh, actually go back and review and, um, you know, watch the Bible studies, anyone? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the reason why I was asking, just, just, just in terms of how we, um, you know, just what it is, expectation, what are you looking for? If it's helpful, you know, when we have the PowerPoints to be a part of it, um, is that something that's helpful? Uh, is that something that because you've taken notes, you're okay with it, you don't need it? Um, is there anyone has any uh, sort of uh, any comments in terms of uh, when you um, when you go back and look at it, does, does it, um, is it important to you to have the, uh, the PowerPoints and things as a part of it? Or... You know, is it just a replay that's important for you? Uh, reason being because it just helps us, as I said, as, as we move forward. I just like to do things that are, um, that obviously, you know, capture what it is that we're doing. And I want to make sure that um, as a benefit, that every, um, everyone is getting what it is that they need. You know, if it's something that's important, I want to make sure that we do it. Um, if it's not, you're like, ah, you know, I take it or leave it. Uh, that helps as well because then that means we're able to uh, turn around, obviously, uh, a lot faster. So 
just why you know I wanted to kind of get a poll just to kind of get a feel of what how everybody um, goes back and in the review. All right, so um, so we're not going to hold up too much time, but if you uh, again, I'm always welcoming your comments. I'm always welcoming your suggestions because I'm always looking for ways to improve what it is that we're doing. Um, so that is one a benefit to us, you know, for, for the Ebenezer family, mm -hmm. um, but also a benefit for those who are not part of our family who actually go back and, you know, enjoy uh, listening to Pastor Ham's teaching. So, um, you know, if you have any comments uh, to that, uh, please let me know, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so good evening once again to everyone. Welcome to our online uh, Bible study because I'm going to edit this part. <laughs> so we're going to start off with like we start right from the start. <laughs> All right, cut. There we go. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our online Bible study. Thank you for being a part of our uh, online uh, study. I pray that each of you have been enjoying this fantastic study that Pastor Ham has been uh, sharing um, on rejection. Um, it's been really some real powerful stuff, and I certainly hope that uh, each of you uh, are being blessed by it. And if you are being blessed, uh, I encourage you to go ahead and share it with someone. Share it, you know, share it uh, with someone and let them know um, that uh, we've all been there, um, but God has some tools. Uh, he has some things for us that where we all can get over and get through it. Amen? Amen. So at this time, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Pastor Ham. Uh, Pastor Ham, we're going to turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, son. And uh, good evening to all of you who have joined us by the way of Zoom and to those of you who are online. Uh, we certainly uh, thank God uh, for your presence tonight. And before we begin our study, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity once again to uh, assemble around your word. Uh, forever, O oh Lord, uh, your word is so settled in heaven. Uh, your word uh, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And it's the entrance of uh, your words that bringeth light. So we thank you for the privilege to uh, study your word because your word gives us to know who we are in Christ. And when we come to know who we are in Christ, we will always have victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. And we know that the Holy Spirit is the divine teacher, and we pray that he will continue to open up our understanding that we may understand the scriptures. And I pray that all that shall be said and done tonight will be pleasing in your sight and that it will bring you glory and honor. And I ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, all right, as my son have made mention of, we are studying, studying rejection uh, healing a wounded heart, healing a wounded heart. And of course, as you know, uh, my way of teaching uh, is sometime to revisit uh, just some of the things that we have uh, gone over. It's possible that uh, some may not have uh, gotten what we have uh, went over uh, before. Uh, so uh, this might give you also the opportunity to uh, uh, receive what possibly you might have uh, missed. And so uh, to begin tonight, to revisit tonight, what we have uh, studied last Wednesday, uh, I asked the question, what do you need to know about God? What do you need to know about God? And you see, it's, it's, it's these truths that we know about God that can bring us out of the stronghold of rejection. It's these truths that we know about God and, and that we know about his word that brings us out of the stronghold of rejection. And so first of all, last Wednesday, we uh, asked the question that we should, uh, 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 we should know God's character. Not a question, but we may mention of the fact that we should know God's character. And we found out that God is love. God is love. And of course, uh, we looked at 1 John uh, chapter number 4 and verse 8, the latter part of that verse. Uh, we ought to know God's character. God is love. 
And then secondly, we looked at the fact that God loves you. God loves you. And of course, we looked at Jeremiah uh, chapter number 31 and verse 3. And then we looked at uh, this point. We ought to know God's heart. We ought to know God's heart. And the reason why that we ought to know God's heart is because God wants to adopt you into his family. Amen. God wants to adopt you into his family. Amen. And of course, we looked at 1 John uh, chapter number three and verse number one. Saint 1 John chapter number three and verse number one. And then also we looked at this point, uh, not only should we know God's character, not only should we know God's heart, but we should know that God wants to be your God through life. Think yeah. about that. God wants to be your God through life, through life. And of course, we looked at uh, Proverbs uh, chapter number three, verses five and six. Proverbs chapter number three, verses five and six. And then we looked at this point. We ought to know God's plan. We ought to know God's plan. You see, God offers salvation to all, A-L-L. -L. God offers salvation to all. And of course, we looked at uh, John, that is St. John, chapter number three and verse 17. St. John, chapter number three and verse 17. We probably looked at also verse 16. But God offers salvation to all. And I'm so glad about that. Amen. That he offers salvation to all. And then another point that we uh, looked at is that God wants everyone to be saved. Yes. God wants everyone to be saved, including you. God wants everyone to be saved, including you. And we looked at uh, Second Peter uh, chapter number three and verse number nine. Yeah. Peter chapter number three huh? and verse number nine. And then we looked at we should know God's purposes. We should know God's purposes. Mm -hmm. And what we found out last Wednesday is that God uses, listen now, God uses rejection to produce hope and Christ-likeness. Isn't that something? That God uses rejection to produce hope and Christ-likeness. And of course, we looked at Romans uh, chapter number five, verses three through five. Romans chapter number five, verses three through five. And then we looked at this point also, uh, God gives you compassion and comfort, which in turn you can give to others. God gives you compassion and comfort, which in turn you can give to others. And we looked at 2 Corinthians chapter number one, verses three through five. 2 Corinthians chapter number one, verses three through five. All right, the next thing that we looked at last, one, last Wednesday was uh, this question. What is the key to God's acceptance? What is the key to God's 
acceptance. And you remember that I said, and I ask you this question, have you ever tried to open a door with a key, but it was the wrong key? Have you ever tried to open a door with a key, but it was the wrong key? And because it was the wrong key, it won't work. Because it was the wrong key, it won't work. So unless you use the right key, you cannot get inside, right? You got to use the right key in order to get into your home. You got to use the right key to get into your home. So unless you use the right key, you cannot get inside. Now, God has already shared the key to entering into an everlasting relationship with him, the key to never being rejected. So once again, God has already Share the key to entering into an everlasting relationship with him, the key to never being rejected. All right, now we looked at four points. We looked at four points, four points uh, you need uh, to know, four, P, four points you need to know. All right, point number one. You have entered through the wrong door. And of course, I'm including myself in this as well. You have entered through the wrong door. Why do you say that? You, like anyone else, have chosen to sin. You, like anyone else, have chosen to sin. So, you cannot find, listen now, you cannot find your way to acceptance with God if you have entered through the wrong door. You cannot find your way to acceptance with God if you have entered through the wrong door. Because the Bible says that we all have sin. We all have sin. Not one of us is perfect. Not one of us is perfect. Amen. So each time we willfully choose to go our own way, mm -hmm. not God's way, we sin. So once again, each time we willfully, willfully choose to go our own way, not God's way, we sin. And then, of course, we looked at Romans chapter number three and verse number 23. And that says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans chapter number three and verse number 23. And of course, the second point that we looked at, you, and I'm including myself in this, you have lost the key to God's acceptance. You have lost the key to God's acceptance because you see your sin separates you from God. Now this is dealing with us before we met Christ. This is dealing with before we met Christ. This is what we're looking at. Not after you have met Christ and received him as your personal savior. But this 
is what has occurred before you met Christ and received him as your personal savior. That's why I said you have lost the key as well as myself to God's acceptance because your sin, my sin, separates you and separates me from God. Mm. And remember last week that I said, you cannot open a locked door without the right key. You cannot, it's utterly impossible. Mm. You cannot open a locked door without the right key. So your own sin, my own sin has locked the right door. Your sin, my own sin, your own sin has locked the right door. Listen now, the door to God and you have no key to open that door. Mm. As I forced they did this before we met Jesus. Now. Your own sin, my own sin has locked the right door, the door to God, and you have no key to open that door. Now, because God's character is morally perfect, he is without sin. So our sin results in a penalty or consequence. Once again, God is without sin. Our sin results in a penalty or consequence. The Bible says, the word of God says, that the consequence of our sin is separation from God. Once again, the Bible says that the consequence of our sin is separation from God. So actually, by choosing your own way, you have separated yourself from God. So by choosing your own way, this is, of course, prior to you receiving Jesus, by choosing your own way, you have separated yourself from God. And of course, we looked at Isaiah number 59 and verse number two. And then the third point that we looked at was this. You have been given a new key to God's door of acceptance. You have been given, glory be to God, a new key to God's door of acceptance. You see, God provided the way for you to be forgiven. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm including myself in that. I'm not leaving myself out of this. But God provided the way for you and for me to be forgiven. Yes. To be forgiven. Yes. You see, the Heavenly Father mm -hmm. sent his only son, Jesus, mm -hmm. to die on the cross. Mm -hmm. Listen now. To pay the penalty for your sins and my sins. God sent his own son, Jesus, to die on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins and for my sins. You see, you and I deserve to die. You and I deserve to die. But instead, listen now, Christ died for you. Christ died for me. So God offers to you the only key, the Lord Jesus Christ, that will open the door to God's eternal 
acceptance. You see, as I said last week, uh, Buddha is the wrong king. Mm -hmm. Islam is the wrong king. Mohammedanism is the wrong king. Confucianism is the wrong king. Shinuism is the wrong king. Secularism is the wrong king. Materialism is the wrong king. Humanism is the wrong key. Jesus Christ is, help me say this, the right key. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the right key. He is the one that will open the door to God's eternal acceptance. So let's look at some scriptures, some very uh, familiar passages of scripture to uh, show you that Jesus Christ is the right key. He is the only key. He is the only key. All right. Can you turn to uh, St. John, very familiar passage of scripture, St. John chapter number 14. And let us please look at verse number six. St. John, chapter number 14, and verse number six. This Amen. will show us that Jesus mm -hmm. is the right key. Jesus is the only key. Only key. He is the only key. All yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, John, chapter number of 14 and verse number six. Listen to what Jesus said. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, that is, he's talking to Thomas, and look what he says. I am the way, not I am a way, but I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth, mm -hmm. and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way. There's no other way. Mm -hmm. I am the truth. Jesus is the personification of truth. He says, I am the truth. I don't speculate about truth. I am the truth. Not only am I the truth, but I am the light. Life. And no man, no woman, boy or girl, cometh, listen now, unto the Father, but by me. Amen. So Thank if God. I want to know the way, mm -hmm. if I want to know the truth, if I want to have life and have it more abundantly, yes. I must follow Jesus. Amen. I must follow mm -hmm. Jesus. Now, 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 a lot of people argue with this. Mm -hmm. Whether you argue with this or whether you accept it or not, the truth still stands. Amen. The <laughs> truth still stands because you remember. <laughs> God has said in, in his word forever, O oh Lord, speaking of himself, my word is settled in heaven. Amen. So whether you or I believe it or not, it doesn't change. The light on. It mm -hmm. doesn't change your thing. For an example, this is a very important example. You can say, I don't believe in a gravity. Mm -hmm. Well, jump off a building. <laughs> Jump off a building. You believe the law of gravity is going to break you. Yes, it will. Now, whether you believe in gravity or not, it still exists. There it is. It still exists. So, 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 Jesus, we got to understand that Jesus is the right key. He mm -hmm. is the only key. Only key. He is the 
he is the he is the one that opens the door mm -hmm. to God's eternal acceptance. Yes, sir. All right. Let's look at another scripture, please. Let's look, let's look at Acts chapter number four. Acts chapter number four. Acts. That's why I went down through those various isms. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, are involved in those various isms. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are sincere, but they are sincerely wrong. Mm. Yeah. All right. Acts chapter number four. Uh -huh. Verse 12. 12. Note what the word of God says. Note what the word of God says. Now, Peter, who is filled with the Holy Spirit, is speaking uh, to the rulers of the people and the elders of Israel. But we're going to just drop down to verse uh, number 12 and note what he says. He says, neither, listen now, is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby, look at the worst, next two words, whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. I, I mean, I mean, this is the truth of God that neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none, for there is none under, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the right key. Jesus is the only key. All right. Uh, Go to Hebrews, go to Hebrews, please. Chapter number seven, Hebrews chapter number seven. And you see, it's these truths that brings us out of our strongholds of rejection. It's these truths, it's, it's God's word. If we put his word in our spirit, if we put his word in our hearts, his word is able to bring us out of our strongholds of rejection. Because he is the right key. He is the only key. All right. Uh, Hebrews chapter number seven. And we're going to look at verses 24 and 25. Hebrews chapter number seven, verses 24 and 25. All right, note what it says. It says, but this man, and in in it's referring to Jesus, it's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Now note what it says. In verse 25, wherefore he, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, wherefore he is able also to save them, listen now, to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Oh, what a powerful truth. Wherefore Jesus is able also to save them, to save us, to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Listen now, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. Right now, Jesus is praying for us. He is our lawyer. He is our advocate seated at the Father's right hand. He saves us to the uttermost. He just didn't save us. 
He saved us to the uttermost. <laughs> to the uttermost. All right, this is the last scripture. Go to 1 John, please. 1 John uh, chapter number 5. 1 John chapter number 5. And we're going to look at verses 10 and 11. 1 John. 1 John chapter number 5. Of course, you, you got to turn toward the book of, to, toward the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. First John chapter number five. And we're going to look at verses 10 and 11. First John chapter number five, verses 10 and 11. Look what it says. Verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. And you see the witness in us is the indwelling Holy Spirit. The witness within us is the indwelling Holy Spirit. So he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Look what it says. He that believeth not, he that believeth not God hath made him Woo, a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Verse 11 is going to tell us what the record is. And this is the record that God hath given to us what? Eternal life. And this life is in his son, not Buddha, he's a mortal man, Confucius, Mohammed. God had given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. All right, uh, to show you how much God loves us, Turn to Romans, please, chapter number five. Romans chapter number five and verse number eight. Whether you know it or not, you are greatly loved by God. God loves you. God loves me. And he loves us with an everlasting love. And there's nothing that can separate us from that love in Christ Jesus. Now, note what it says in Romans chapter number five and verse number eight, chapter number five. Romans chapter number five and verse number eight. This is power. It says, but God, what did he do? But God commendeth his love, not his judgment, not his wrath, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, still unrighteous, still ungodly, what did Christ do? Christ died for us. Powerful. Once again, but God commended his love, not his judgment, not his condemnation, not his wrath, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. And I, I know I've said this so many times. Sister, brother, God loves you. He loves you. And thank God he loves me. Now, this is the fourth point that we didn't get to last Wednesday. You can open you can open the door of acceptance. You, 
tonight can open the door of acceptance. You can receive God's forgiveness and peace by trusting in Jesus Christ now. Once again, you can open the door of, ac of acceptance. You tonight, you tonight can receive God's forgiveness and peace. How? By trusting in Jesus Christ now, in O W. Now, while you may hold the key to the door, you still have to unlock the door. Let me say that again. While you may hold the key to the door, you still have to unlock the door. You need to acknowledge that Jesus Christ died as your substitute. You need to acknowledge that Jesus Christ died as your substitute. In other words, he died in your place. So you have to rely on what he did for you and ask him to come into your life to take control of your life. So once again, you need to acknowledge that Jesus Christ died as your substitute. Rely on what he did for you and ask him to come into your life to take control of your life. You see, if you allow him to be your Lord and Savior, he forgives you, listen now, of your sins. And I should put A-L-L -L there. He forgives you of all your sins. And listen, and when you are forgiven, listen now, and when you are forgiven, thank God all of us on Zoom and online are, but when you are forgiven, not only are you saved from separation from God, but you also are given, you also are given the peace of God. Once again, when you are forgiven, not only are you saved from separation from God, which is terrible, but you also are given the peace of God. And so right now, people need to know that Jesus is standing at the door of their heart right now. Please turn to the last book, the book of Revelation, chapter number three and verse 20. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart right now. If you are not saved tonight, Jesus is standing at the door of your heart right now. Revelation chapter number three and verse 20. Revelation chapter number three and verse 20. All right, note what it says, Revelation chapter number three and verse 20. Now, remember, if you're not saved tonight, 
Jesus is standing at the door of your heart right now. All right, listen to Revelation chapter number three and verse number 20. This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I stand at the door. And what is he doing? And knock. Jesus said, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I'm knocking and I'm knocking. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and do what? Open the door. Know what Jesus says, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus says, if you hear my voice and open the door, Jesus says, I will come in to you and will sup with you and you with me. Jesus is willing to dine with you. <laughs> He's willing to dine with you, but you got, you got to open the door. He's not going to force himself in. He's not a thief. He's not a robber. He's not going to violate your will. He's knocking. But you got to hear him knocking. And not only should you hear him knocking, but you should open the door so that he can come into your life. My, 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 my. That is powerful. That is powerful. All right. Question, how can you how can you break the rejection cycle? Mm. How? And this is what this is all about. How can I break the rejection cycle? Mm. How can you break the rejection cycle? Well, first of all, uh, sisters and brothers, we have to meditate, memorize, and if necessary, write down some scriptures. We got to meditate, memorize, and we should write down some scriptures. All right. We're talking about how can you break the rejection cycle? Listen, just because someone rejects me doesn't mean that everyone rejects me. Once again, just because someone rejects me doesn't mean that everyone rejects me. And here it is. Jesus loves me no matter what others choose to do. That's powerful. Jesus loves me no matter what others choose to do. All right, let's look at some scripture. And, 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 and if you can't memorize these scriptures, I hope that you can write them down and, 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 and go back over them because this is these, the word of God is what's going to break that rejection cycle. Knowing these truths. Knowing what God is saying about you and how he loves you. And I know I'm saying that so much, but it's, you got to understand that God loves you. 
Now, uh, go to John, that is St. John, please, chapter number 15. St. John, chapter number 15. And it's a shame because a lot of people walk around in this world feeling like nobody loves me. And all they got to do is open up this book and see that God loves them. Loved them so much that he gave his only begotten son. He became their substitute. Became a curse for them. Took their judgment. Died their death. Because he loves them and he loves me. Look at St. John, please. Chapter number 15 and verse number nine. And these are the words of Jesus. And remember, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth. So what he says is the truth. He cannot lie. He says, I am the way, the truth. And, and let me just pause here for a moment. You remember when uh, uh, Jesus was on trial, he was stand, uh, standing in the presence of Pilate and Pilate asked the question, what is truth? He failed to realize Truth was standing right in front of me. <laughs> the truth was standing right in front of him. Now, Jesus cannot lie. Now, note what Jesus says. Now, note what Jesus said. Now, remember that I said, Jesus loves you no matter what others choose to do. All right, John chapter 15 and verse number nine. And look at look at this. Jesus says, as the Father have loved me, oh, have I loved you. You see that? Continue ye in my love. So as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. And then he says, continue you in my love. Jesus says, get the contrast. I mean, get the contrast. Jesus says, as the Father has loved me. Just let that sink in. As the Father has loved me. Now look what he says now. So, so have I loved you. You get that? I mean, that is powerful. And then he says, continue you in my love. I mean, my God. I mean, Jesus said, <laughs> I'm going to be in repetition, as the Father has loved me. So, have I loved you? All right. Now, 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 just because, just because someone, listen now, withholds love from me, doesn't mean everyone will withhold love from me. Just because someone withholds love from me doesn't mean everyone will withhold love from me. You see, God will always listen to me. Somebody need to tweet that. God will always listen to me and will never and will never withhold his love from me. My, 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 my. God will always listen Amen. and will never, somebody need to underline that word, never, never means never, and will never withhold his love from me. All right. Uh, please go to Psalm 66. Psalm 66. 
please. And, and, and verse 20. Psalm 66. And verse 20. Somebody right now need to be coming right out of that stronghold of rejection. Amen. Psalm 66 and verse 20. Psalm 66 and verse 20. If you're there, note what it says. Blessed be God, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Blessed be God which have not turned away my prayer. And remember that says, God always listens to me. God will always listen to me. And note what the psalmist said, blessed be God, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. And another translation puts that verse this way, praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer, or withheld his love from me. I like that translation. <laughs> I like that translation. Praise be to God who has not rejected me, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. My, 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 my. All right. The next word I would like to look at is, is, is worth, worthlessness, worthlessness. We looked at rejection. We, we, we look at how can you break the, the rejection cycle. cycle. We're going to look at worthlessness, W-O-R-T-H-L-E-S-S-N-E-S-S, -S -S -S, worthlessness, worthlessness. We're looking at how to break the rejection cycle. We're looking at worthlessness. Uh, uh. Now, just because, and if I was uh, before you all in church, I would say, uh, say just because. <laughs> all right. Just because someone may think that I am worthless doesn't mean everyone thinks I'm worthless, all right? Just because someone may mm. think, may think, may think that I am worthless, doesn't mean everyone thinks I'm worthless, all right? Listen, God has already Establish my word. Listen, God, God has already established my word. And because of him, I will always have worth. So forget about your naysayers and your enemies and your so-called friends, your fair-weathered friends who may feel and think that you're worthless. Well, what you need to tell them is look at them dead in the face and say, you know what? God has already established my work. <laughs> and because of him, I will always have worth. And because of him, I will always have worth. All right. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, turn please to uh, St. Luke chapter number 12. St. Luke chapter number 12. You know, some of you in your life might have had someone to tell you you're not worth anything. Who are them? Who are they to tell you what you what you're not worth? 
St. Luke chapter number 12, please. And let us look at verses six and seven. This, the word of God is going to break this cycle of rejection. Get this word in your spirit. Get this word in your heart. St. Luke chapter 12, verses six and seven. Now, now know what Jesus says. Know what Jesus says. He says, he says, are not five sparrows sold for two far things? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Now, 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 now let's, let's, let's just pause here for a moment. Jesus said, are not five sparrows sold for two far things? And not one of them is forgotten before God. That verse tells us that God is so concerned about his creation that he takes care of all of his creation. You don't see a sparrow on a tree limb saying to another sparrow, can you tell me where I can get some food? Can you, can you tell me where I can go? Because I'm really stressed. The birds of the air are not stressed. But what I'm trying to get you to see, yet God feeds every last one of them every day. He feeds them every day. And then someone that says that God attends every sparrow's funeral. Not one of them is forgotten. No, look, not one of them is forgotten before God. Now look at verse number seven. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Whether you have hair or not. If you got hair, <laughs> God says all of your hairs are numbered and some of you ladies you know as well as men you, you, you in the morning when you uh, you know getting yourself together you put the comb through uh, your hair and uh, you know some of the hair comes out on your comb god knows what very number that is he is just that awesome now think about it he said he said he, he said he said he said the very hairs of your head are numbered, are numbered, are all numbered. And then look what he says, fear not therefore, look what he says now, ye are of more value than many sparrows. In other words, God is showing you your worth, your worth. He has already established your worth, amen. Now, just because someone doesn't value me, just because someone doesn't value me, doesn't mean that no one values me. Just because someone doesn't value me, doesn't mean that no one values me why do you say that pastor god values me god values me enough to send jesus to die for me so that i can spend eternity with him i know that was a whole lot but that's worth tweeting out just because someone doesn't value me doesn't mean that no one values me. God values me. And he valued me and he valued you so much that he sent Jesus to die for me and for you so that we can spend eternity with him. Now let's turn to a very 
familiar passage of scripture. St. John chapter number three, very familiar passage of scripture. St. John chapter number three. And um, we're gonna look at verse number 16. St. John chapter number three. And we're going to look at verse number 16. Very familiar. Know what it says. Here it is. For God, not just loved, but God so loved the world. That's the, the world of humanity. You can put your name there. For God so loved the world. What did he do? that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right, we looked at rejection, we looked at worthlessness. Now we're gonna look at self-hate. Self-hate. self-hate all right here we go again just because someone has rejected me doesn't mean i should hate myself that's powerful and unfortunately People hate themselves because they have received rejection from other people. But this is what this study is all about. I, I want the word of God to be put so deep into your heart and so deep into your spirit that he will bring you out of that stronghold of rejection. It's his word. So just because someone has rejected me doesn't mean I should hate myself. You see, the reason why I'm not going to hate myself is because God has always loved me. The reason why I am not going to hate myself is because God has always loved me and I can rely on his love. I can rely on his love. I mean, I can depend on his love. All right. Uh, please turn to first John. First epistle of John, please. Chapter number four. That's going back toward the book of Revelation. First John chapter number four. And we're going to look at verse 16. St. John, I mean, 1 John, chapter number 4, and verse 16. Just because someone has rejected me doesn't mean I should hate myself. God always, God has always loved me, and I can rely on his love. I can rely on his love all right first john chapter number four and verse number 16 note what it says it says and we have known and believe the love that god hath to us you see that and we have known and believe the love that god hath to us god is love God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Oh, my God. Once again, and we have known and believed the love that God has to us, has to us, has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth 
in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So if you run up on some people who are always dishing out hatred, the love of God is not in them. They don't know nothing about the love of God. And you got some people like that. They are angry and bitter and, 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 and just say anything to you. They don't have the love of God in them. They don't have the love of God in them. All right? Just because someone has rejected me doesn't mean I should condemn myself. Just because someone rejects, rejected me doesn't mean I should hate myself. Doesn't mean that I should condemn myself. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because God will never condemn me. Why? Because I am in Christ's family. <laughs> Woo! I can say to those of you on, who, are, who are on Zoom and online, hello, family. Hello, Pastor. <laughs> hello, sister. Hello, brother. Amen. So just because someone has rejected me doesn't mean I should condemn myself. Why? Because God, and I like these next two words, God will never, God will never condemn me because I am in Christ's family. I am in Christ's family. Now, uh, uh, go over to, please, Romans uh, chapter number eight, please. Romans chapter number eight and... Uh, Look at verse one. Let's let the word of God speak, speak speak to us. Chapter number Romans eight, chapter number Romans chapter eight, and verse number one. I'm just going to read the first portion of verse one. First portion of verse one. Romans chapter 8 and the first portion of verse 1. Look what it says. There is therefore now, N O W, there is therefore now, listen, no condemnation to them, to them which are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore. Now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Another translation puts it this way. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And let me just say this, sisters and brothers. If you know someone who is always condemning someone else that is not of God that is not God I said that is not God because God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved so if somebody's operating in the spirit of condemnation that's not of God Because who are you? Who am I to condemn someone? When God hasn't condemned me. <laughs> I said, when God hasn't condemned me, who are you to condemn me? Oh my, oh my. All right. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is negative behavior. These are the things that will uh, break the rejection cycle. We looked at rejection, worthlessness, self-hate, 
Now let's look at negative behavior. Negative behavior. Negative behavior. All right. Just because, sisters and brothers, someone has rejected me doesn't mean I should act destructively by behaving in a way that sets me up for more rejection. Just because someone has rejected me doesn't mean I should act destructively by behaving in a way that sets me up for more rejection. Now, since I will pay for my bad choices and be rewarded for my good choices, I am going to make good choices. And if I was at church, I would say, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can make a choice. You can, in fact, you can make a good choice. So once again, just because someone has rejected me doesn't mean I should act destructively by behaving in a way that sets me up for more rejection. Now, since I will pay for my bad choices and be rewarded for my good choices, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to make good choices. I am going to make good choices. Now, can you point at yourself and say, I am going to make good choices. <laughs> Amen. Now, um, Go to Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter number six, please. Galatians chapter number six. And uh, let us look at uh, verses seven and eight. Galatians chapter number six. And we're going to look at verses seven and eight. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Note what it says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption or death. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And, and another um, translation puts it this way. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. And I like to say that again. I like to read that translation again. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. All right. 
I'm dealing with the just because. I, I'm beginning everything with just because you can see that. <laughs> just because. <laughs> I ought to, I ought to, I ought to title a sermon like that, just because. <laughs> it's just because. <laughs> okay, here's another just just because. <laughs> Somebody need to tweet that. Tweet just because. <laughs> All right, look, just because someone has rejected me doesn't give me license to do what is wrong. Amen. Just because someone has rejected me doesn't give me license to do what is wrong. It's almost like you did it to me. That's the devil made me do it. <laughs> but, but as a child of God, we got to take the high road. We got to take the high road. Once again, just because someone has rejected me doesn't give me license to do what is wrong. Why? Because God has given me the power to do what is right. God has given me the power to do what is right. So sin will not be my master. Sin will not be my master. Now, note what God says to a king. Go, go to Genesis. Go to Genesis uh, chapter number uh, four. And uh, note what God says to Cain. Genesis chapter four and verse number seven. Just because someone has rejected you doesn't give you license to do what is wrong. All right, Genesis chapter number four and verse number seven. Now God is speaking to Cain because Cain is, is, is wroth. He's angry because God has not accepted his offering. He, he didn't have respect to Cain's offering. And so he says to Cain in verse seven, he says, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, nobody's, remember what God says, God says, sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. Thou shalt rule over him. Now, another translation puts it this way. If you do what is right, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not, but if you do not do what is right, note what God says, sin is crouching at your door. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Sin is desiring to have you, but you must master it. Now, 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 unfortunately, uh, 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 Cain let sin master him because he killed his brother. He killed his brother because he couldn't get the God. So what did he do? He killed his brother and God warned him, sin is crouching at your door. Sin is crouching at your door. Sin has desires to have you, but you must master it. And unfortunately, Cain did not master uh, that sin because unfortunately, he killed his brother. He killed his brother. Now, let me just say this. Um, um, they were taught the right way to approach God. 
Now, even though the Bible doesn't say that, but they were uh, they were told by Adam and Eve the right way to approach God, and the right way to approach God was through the blood. That's why the Lord had respect to Abel's uh, uh, sacrifice because he gave of the uh, first thing of the flock. In other words, uh, uh, an animal was slain and, and, and blood was presented. Blood was presented. Cain, you know, he, 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 he gave uh, uh, what was of the uh, earth. You know, uh, he, he brought of the fruit of the ground. There's no blood in that. You see, there's no blood in that. And you see, what we got to understand is this, sisters and brothers. This is the principle. When Abel brought of the first, first, first things of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the reason why the Lord had respect unto Abel and, and to his offering is because Abel was confessing, I am a sinner. And the only way that I can come into the presence of a holy God is through the blood. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why God didn't have no respect to Cain's offering. Because Cain, because Cain uh, uh, brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord. There, there, there's no blood in fruit. And so what Cain was saying, I am not a sinner. He was acknowledging that I am not a sinner. I'm all right. I'm all right. And do you not know, sisters and brothers, we got so many people today who feel as though that they are all right. You know, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to give my life to Jesus. Because at the end, God's going to weigh me the good and the bad, and my good outweighs the bad, then he's going to accept me. That's the devil's lie. The only way that we can come before God and have right standing with God is through the precious blood of Jesus. Jesus is the one who makes us righteous and puts us in right standing with God. So Abel was saying, I'm a sinner. I'm acknowledging I'm a sinner. And I know that the only way that I can come into your holy presence is through the blood. Cain was saying, I'm all right. <laughs> I don't need to come through the blood. I'm just going to give God the fruit of the ground. That's why God rejected his offering. Because he wasn't coming the right way. And sisters and brothers, let me tell you. The only way you can, you can come to God is the right way. The only way you can come to God is, is, is the right way, not in your own way, but you got to come God's way. And God's way is the Lord Jesus Christ. God's way is the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And so I'm, I'm going to have to uh, stop there. Uh, uh, we will pick up from that point uh, if the Lord is willing um, mm -hmm. uh, next Wednesday. Okay. But this will be the question that I will begin with uh, next Wednesday if the Lord is 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 willing. Mm -hmm. Ever since my closest friend rejected me, I expect other friends to do the same. So how can I keep from feeling like a reject? Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to begin, if the Lord is willing, with this question next Wednesday. The question is, ever since my closest friend rejected me, I expect other friends to do the same. So how can I keep from feeling like a reject? And Father, we just thank you uh, for your word. We thank you for those who have joined us by the way of Zoom and those who have joined us by uh, being online. And we pray and, 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 and hope that uh, your word has strengthened them and, 
and that your word have encouraged them and that your word is bringing them out of the stronghold of rejection. Amen. The word emphatically tells us that you love us. Yes. And we thank you for your love, for your mm -hmm. love. Yes, yes. Amen. That all that have been said tonight have been mm -hmm. your sight and that have brought you glory and honor. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. And as I always say in closing, uh, I will yeah. see you in church. Amen. I bless you and have a good night. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.